Good evening, everybody. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we are going to start. Uh, first up is the public comment portion of our program. So is anybody here tonight from the public who wishes to speak on anything that won't be heard during the... If, if so, okay. So if you could just come up, uh, name, address, and uh, three minutes, and to the board. And, uh, it's not. Well, I'm not sure if this is the right time, or I should wait until you address the elk special permit. That's yeah. Wait. There'll be a public oh. comment section for that uh, particular right, item. So you can wait for that. Anybody else here who has anything, to, uh, any comments to make about anything other than what we're talking about tonight? No. Twice. Okay. So, uh, first item up then, uh, slated for 7 o'clock, is a site plan <clears throat> amendment. Condition for conservation restriction at the Village Hill, Northampton, map ID 31C-17. And we have a presentation of, not a presentation, but anything, or is it just a discussion? Well, um, uh, Beth Murphy is here from Mass Development. Um, Yeah, I really <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. So um, I'll I'll, yep. I'll take it. Um, so um, there have been a couple of permits that have been issued uh, for projects up at Village Hill, and they included areas of open space that were intended to be permanently protected. So conditions of the permit were that those areas be permanently protected with a conservation restriction, which is always the way that. Planning Board has required things to be protected. Um, in this case, um, and, and once they're protected by a conservation restriction, it's you can't change them by um, you have to go to a, um, for an act by the legislature to undo something, and that never happens, <laughs> um, except if you're in Boston, I guess. Um, but so mass development has not um, yet recorded anything on um, some of these parcels and is concerned that one if they are permanently protected at this moment then if there are some adjustments in planning or for the, um, the next phase of development or even during construction now that require some slight adjustments of the property boundaries they wouldn't be able to do that if a conservation restriction were co recorded so as an interim measure they're proposing this member in this memorandum of, um, understanding that they will um, protect um, these are meant to be permanently protected but there's sort of this non statutory protection in place until um, I believe it's one year after the build out for the Pecoy properties, and <coughs> then they would come back and do the actual um, uh, permanent protection that the condition requires. But they just want a little bit more flexibility in the interim. Um, so, and, and staff has no problems with it. Um, city solicitors looked at it. The mayor ultimately is the one who will sign off, sign on the line for the memorandum of under of agreement, but. Um, since it was a permit condition, you officially have to amend that to allow this other mechanism. And I, if I could just add a clarification, they're currently under a conservation restriction through the Landowners Association, which wouldn't expire to 2034. Um, so they are they are protected. That is recorded. But the reason we're back here is that the wording of the permit says for the benefit of the city. So it eventually has to go under this Article 97 perpetual easement restriction. But any amendments would still have to be approved. Um, right. So if there was a, you know, it, you know, it depends on the nature of any modification to the boundary. But yes, they would come back and, and explain why they need to right. make a change. Okay. Uh, which boundaries are you talking about? We don't actually think <coughs> are going to change and in fact we've recorded the A&R plan already for Beach Street Park and we plan to record the A&R plan for Oak Park. What this really is is um, we're having construction activities around here and the Article 97 is so strict that you cannot even get an easement to cross the area for construction purposes without going to a two-thirds vote of the City Council and a vote of the State Legislature. So we really just want to avoid that kind of delay. Any questions? 
Seems pretty straightforward enough. It Devin? does, but it's under a conservation agreement now. Is that what I Right, but it's right. time limited <coughs> the way that it's, the, the way those typically run. So why are conservation restrictions in the, um, uh, under this Article um, 97 are permanent? So the concerns that were just expressed are not relevant to this conservation permit? No, because it's on the, it runs with the deed, so there's flexibility for them to cross or, okay. you know, whatever they need to do to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyone? No? Okay. Uh, any questions from public regarding this issue? No? I move we close the public hearing. Second. Second by Jen. All in favor? Any discussion about this item? I want some assurance that the size, I mean, you know, that, that we're not delaying this for any, I, I appreciate the convenience issue, but I don't want to uh, think that boundaries can get squeezed or things change. I, I mean, I. Well, no, again, that would, and I, um, actually Beth clarified that that's not their intention. But, um, and that would still have to come back for approval um, by the board if anything okay. changed. Okay. I move we approve site plan amendment condition for conservation restriction Village Hill, Northampton, MAP ID 31C 17. Second. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. So 7.05, next year at 7.15, we have some miscellaneous things, uh, some motion on the minutes. And I'm sure we've all read. I did read I'm the minutes. Second. Okay, minutes. Now the other thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, street. I don't know if we want to jump into those. We can knock off one or two before it's done. Um, this is our th third round, I think, of street petition review. Yes. We kind of set a precedent where roads that we thought unequivocally were roads or streets or avenues, we voted in favor. Those, I don't know if we've actually rejected any. Uh, either we've, I think for all those that we uh, have even felt strongly against or were indifferent about, we just gave no opinion and, and forwarded it to the DPW. Um, against the one at the top of Cloud Street? I think some voted against it, but I think ultimately. I think it was a no recommendation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So maybe we can knock one or two of these off. The first up is Tyler Court. Do you? Need to show us where these are, um, Carolyn. Or is everybody? Did everybody get a chance to visit these? We have them. I can put it on the screen if you need to. But um, does anybody need to see them? No. That's um, so, everyone will remember where that one is. It's yeah. tucked in, kind of behind Smith, off of Top of Trumbull Road. Yeah, it's about four inches wide, and but it serves more than many houses. Yeah. It has a cul-de-sac at the end that's being used for. What? Parking. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's very hard to turn around without the cold. I always like that street, actually. Oh, I do too. It's a beautiful that's spot. That's yeah, that's yeah. not the point. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, any thoughts on, on? I think we should recommend it. Is it street? I. Uh, DPW recommendations, do we have them for these listings? No, these just came to through City Council okay. and were referred out. So they haven't, they set a schedule for doing, they're doing on-site public hearings for all of these things. Um, <clears throat> but, um, no, they haven't. Okay. So there's another page. Any comments on this street? Or do you want to just jump into a vote? Well, Randy, would you espouse about your opinion for its history? Um, well, I, I think it's something that, that the people that live on there are paying taxes, and it's 
the street that they use in common with their neighbors, and that's my sort of my criteria for it. But people are paying taxes on all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm more likely to recommend something to be a public street than some of you would be probably, but uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't have to be paved. It doesn't have to be a throughway. It doesn't have to be a th through street. This one looks street. like it maybe was a street. It was um, a right. This I always there, there's some in these streets that we've looked at where you you don't even drive down it. You drive up to it and you just look at it and say this this is a glorified driveway. This isn't a street. Um, I don't. I never got that feeling with the street. I knew this right where the street was. I was familiar with it. I've driven down it a bunch of times. Um, to me, it feels like a street. It serves three or four houses. I'm in favor of recommending it as a street. I don't know if people feel strongly one way or the other. No. Motion, Frandy? No, I move we recommend acceptance of Tyler Court as a public street. Public way, whatever. Is there a second? Oh, second. Up second, second. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so one opposed. This is um, that is Tyler Court. We have Prospect Court. He's up next. This one's Mark's Private Drive. It is no yeah. through traffic. Five miles an hour, and. It runs itself into a parking lot, which then can be run out in both directions. Right. This one, to me, feels. Can I borrow that a second? I have to be special. He's got two of them. No. Prospect Court. Clearly a public way, in my opinion. Surprise. <laughs> <Press. laughs> This is one I wonder if the, um, the residents on it this is the one prefer to have it a public stream. I mean, I know it's not what we thin. base our yeah. decisions on, but it, it's posted private way. It right. looks like that's something that. What? Are you talking to. Can you talk a little louder, please? What? Please talk. <laughs> I was just making a comment. I, I wonder if the residents of the street have a preference. I mean, I know that's not what we're hinging no. our decision on, but it is it is posted as a private way. It's very, very All narrow. It does serve, she's one, two, three, looks like maybe five houses. It would have actually helped if some of the, the applicants for these roads had come mm -hmm. and right. given us some of the background. Well, <clears throat> at this point, all the petitions now are being put in by DPW staff because there are so many streets and they all have to be addressed by this winter. Um, so these, this whole list were all street petitions um, submitted by no. DPW. DPW. But to the they're, they're not submitting it because they're in favor of it no. necessarily. No, they just want getting it on to get it cleaned up. Don't yeah. they? Oh, so this is not necessarily coming with six signatures from no. the community. Well, yes, there's six signatures oh, okay. of residents, and they all happen to work at DPW. Oh. <laughs> so the residents don't have any idea that this is happening. Right. But, but DPW I mean, is they, forwarding this to us without a recommendation one way or the other? They're no, just getting it off the... <clears throat> right. So what happens is DPW has, I don't know how many it was, seven, 75? Some, some really huge number of streets that they determined were not ever accepted. And in order to process them, uh, the Board of Public Works just asked them to just get them moving because not uh, only a few of them had individual residential owners come forward with their own petitions because they were the ones that first realized and said, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to plow my street. I want to get this petition in right away. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many of them and the city has to deal with all of them, staff is just putting them forward. It goes to city council and then immediately gets referred out back to Board of Public Works and Planning Board for review and recommendation that would then get fed back to City Council. City Council reviews Board of Public Works um, and Planning Board recommendations, and so they feed into, ultimately, to the Council's decision. I think that's even more, sorry, I just jumped the gun. Can I go? I think that's even more reason for us to not make a recommendation on any of these. I, I mean, that just really, I think, bolsters my original thought that this is not something for us to, to weigh in on. Yep. If it 
becomes a city street, can it maintain a five mile an hour speed limit? <laughs> Um, Just because I'm that's curious. That's a good question. I, I don't know. I, I mean, the posting is done by, yeah, had, there's a special approval process. I don't think that's valid, no. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. So that's a, an, an interesting question, too, because okay. obviously they've decided that's what they want and they've got that up there. But And I, and I don't Somebody. know that that's enforceable right. either. <laughs> well, that yeah. could very well be. <laughs> Yeah, if, it's it not says no if, it's not a, if it's not a public street, yeah. then it's not well, a anyway. Right. right. Okay. Any other comments on this one? Well, I mean, interestingly enough, that up at Smith College, the speed limit in front of um, John M. Green and so on is 35, but they've posted 25. It's just the way yeah. it. <clears throat> yeah. Partly because the process is so hard to get it changed, especially on a state route. Incidentally, the <coughs> BPW, th these are coming to us piecemeal because they've <coughs> actually met and looked at all these sites in, a, in one of their quasi-public hearings. As I recall, looking at the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although the, these, they're, con they're still setting public um, meetings at the street. Yeah. Um, consecutively as these go forward. So they're still in the process of doing their public right. meetings. Right, that's, that's what I meant. Yeah. Well, sort of to pursue, I mean, you get resistance each, each meeting we go through these, but in the framework of Jen's comment, in the same way that I would expect the DPW to advise me about the infrastructure of a new project and give me a, a staff report about that, I'm thinking they should advise me you know I mean our role I, I, Frandy's point is our role is people pay taxes they live on a street we should maintain their street but I think to me it matters how that street got to be a street what its evolution was what its maintainability is for the city I mean there, there are issues but the I, DPW <laughs> man the BTW will uh, uh, they will address that that's not our Purview. It's the DTW's purview, and if they are against it, I doubt if it would get through the process. Okay. So we should approach it strictly as a planning point, or what, what's best from our viewpoint of the city, not what the people that live there want, not necessarily what the people that live there want, not necessarily the maintainability and so on. That's the D DPW's concern. That's my feeling. We have to put on blinders and think, look at it as a planning board. Yeah, I think taking that one step further, I would agree that there is a different planning purview mm -hmm. relative to streets and, and that, um, you know, it's not strictly maintenance, but it's about the interconnectivity and the system from a planning perspective. Um, and some of, I, I agree that some of the history makes, um, helps in understanding that, you know, if someone applied for a common driveway permit and then 10 years later wants it to be a street, you know, I think that's important. But some of these are so old <laughs> that there was never even a permit process for them. And I think it just never, for whatever reason, it never came forward to the city and the city just started absorbing them as their own. <clears throat> to me, this feels less like a street, but because it serves a number of houses, six, seven, eight, and because of its location, it's not like it's a little stub off a road where you can, it feels like a development popped up and they needed to serve that development so there's a private way for that development this is right off a of prospect it seems like it maybe was a street at one point or now in over time it the back end was closed off or um, I, the, from a from a planning sense it seems like it wants to be a street it is a street it, or it was at one time I would recommend it as a street but I'm not I don't feel strongly about it uh, but that's how that's how I would vote. You want to make a motion for approval or no opinion? Okay. I move that we make no recommendation relative to prospect court. Second. Second. Uh, 
that in Stephen. <laughs> Better restate that yeah. motion. Just restate the motion to make sure I understood it correctly. I move that we make no recommendation relative to Prospect Court. Second by Stephen. All in favor? Four. That means all opposed. Four. John, are you abstaining? Oh, no. I'm undecided. I'll vote the second group. Okay. So, four Wait, to four. Let me, let me get that again. Who was that? Myself, Frandy, Devin, and John. So, we need another motion? I move we approve Prospect Court and recommend that it be. <laughs> recommend approval. Right. Recommend approval of prospect court history. Second. I'll second. That. Second, Frandy. All in favor? I'll change my vote so we don't end up. There we go. All opposed? <laughs> and you opposed? <laughs> Short stain. Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we got two out of the way. We will move on to our second hearing of the night, which is scheduled for 715. It is a special permit site plan amendment for an outdoor pavilion at the Elks Lodge, 17 Spring Street, Florence, map ID 22B-111. Great. How are you doing, Jeff? We got a presentation. Yeah, just real quick, uh, Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design Group uh, here on behalf of the Elks Lodge, uh, located at 17 Spring Street down in the Florence section. Um, here to request an amendment to the special permit um, to allow for the construction of an outdoor pavilion. Um, they've got, um, got plans to construct an outdoor open air pavilion, um, concrete slab, no, no walls, just held up with posts um, to provide a place to host some of their current events that they've got the cruise night. Um, events um, which are outlined in the application um, we've already been through conservation commission because of the floodplain uh, Carolyn can probably speak to this better than I can in terms of the amendment that um, is being requested I, they, they were granted a special permit for um, outdoor events I believe is the um, for the liquor license is that what you're talking or for the license commission well, no, th there was a spe the, the special permit that was originally granted. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the special permit originally was granted by City Council for membership clubs because at that time City Council was the body that would um, approve those. But coming back on amendment, that, that zoning has changed so that Planning Board approves those um, or reviews and makes a decision about them. Um, so it wasn't necessarily for, it was inside, I mean, th when the building was constructed, it was for the building. And since then, they've had some outdoor temporary tents, as you probably all know, um, seasonally. Um, and so they got, they had to go through the license commission to get that allowance for the tents. But this is a request for a more permanent structure. So it's really an expansion of the original permit so that there's indoor and outdoor function. This would, the, so basically this is a permanent tent. Yes. And because of its permanency, would it extend uh, during the year or during the daylight hours, the activities that the Elks? I don't believe so. Um, a couple of representatives from the Elks here, um, but all right now they don't have any plans to you know, expand the hours of, uh, of the activities that they currently provide there. Um, they just need a more permanent structure and more durable structure in which to um, accommodate these events. Is there is there going to be power? To uh, yes, there will be power. And it, w any more power to this permanent structure than would it ordinarily be run to the temporary structure? I don't believe so. Um, Question, um, just to, to understand in the cover letter, it says that hours of operation for most events will be limited to weekends and functions. And then it talks about in the next paragraph additional events 
summers only would include other some you know doesn't say hours operation for events it says most events right right so um, what about the events that don't fall under most sure I think I think there's a few that happen annually um, I don't know whether the awards banquet there's some others that they may be able to speak to that may you know extend slightly beyond those hours um, I can't speak specifically to you know which events those would be um, but I think you know the intent is for them to be within the confines of what they currently operate now this is closer to the property line than the current thing that's standing there is it uh slightly yes this is the existing building. right and it's closer to the property line than the other one was um and it shows shrubbery or something on your whatever you're calling the, it the you're pavilion calling it it's, it's just really low grass kind yes. of stuff yes yes yeah, it's open, it's um, open space, right? Now. And and there's not much that is protecting uh, on your side of the fence that's protecting that from the property next door. I take it from uh, looking at it. Sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe there's more than you know, the vegetation that exists there now. Um, Chimney line. Right. And how is this going to be lit? I imagine there'd be lights up underneath. Um, you know, inside underneath the roof of the. Of the You've made a few guesses and imagines. Can we get some real authority on these things? I do. Sure. Sure. I assume there were no lights. Right. I assume there were no lights. Well, that's why uh, I'm Greg Zach Rizuski. I'm uh, past exalted ruler there and then uh, chairman of the building committee is and a bunch of other ones. But um, basically, the only power and the lights we're going to have there is for safety reasons for cleanup. There's, there's just a couple that are going to be on the inside just to light up the floor if we have to pick things up at night so people can get out safely because there's no intentions of going past dusk. We're not really changing what we do. Um, any other questions that I can ask? Uh, answer. It, the um, the tent, the temporary tent that goes up, does it does it uh, follow a seasonal schedule where it goes up April fifteenth and comes down September fifteenth? Uh, just as it goes permits? up right around May, because uh, cruise nights start in May, and I think the last cruise night, I'm not the chairman of cruise night. I think we go to second second week of, second week of September. And the availability of this permanent structure won't extend that cruise night season? No, there's no intention to do that. That's set in so many weeks and that's it. That's uh, the cruise night people have control over that. But they have a set uh, schedule they've been doing for years and not, just no, 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 not that I know of changing anything on that. Mm -hmm. Could I, what were the dates again? I'm sorry. May to September. May what? To September. Till September. Beginning of May till the beginning of September? Is that what you said? I believe it's like mid September before the tent okay. comes down. So I guess I'm back to John's question. So I think you're saying most events will go till dusk, but what about the ones that don't go? How late do they go past dusk? We have no plans for anything later than dusk. I mean, on a weekend like a lot of times the uh the lodge we donate the use of the lodge and everything for the uh, high school and the junior high school and all their uh, sports banquets. So the smaller ones may want to hold it outside on a nice sunny day, just to do their awards and everything like that. And those end early. Uh, maybe like two or three hours, they eat their little meal and uh, then they're gone. Uh, the only other thing to be honest is that Monday nights, uh, we do have a horseshoe tournament. Um, so they probably be using that the horseshoe pits will be to the side of it. That's Monday night, and usually horseshoes are done by seven o'clock. They never go past us. Do you use some loudspeakers? Pardon? Do you use loudspeakers? Uh, for cruise night, they do. Anything else, we don't. <clears throat> you don't now, but would this allow you to, with the with the power that's going out there and so forth? I'm envisioning, you know. Amplifiers or, or you know banquets moving outside under the lights, going longer because they can. And we have no intention, and as chairman of the pavilion committee, they're going, you know that's going to be like you know my decision to set the parameters of this and the way you know we wanted to do it, we wanted to replace the tent with a permanent structure. Uh, 
just to make it more friendly for cruise night people and the guests and the um, sports banquets they have you know a permanent place it's a little bit more than having your meal on a dirt and we do oh we I'm sorry we do have a chicken barbecue we have once a year which is usually on a Saturday but that's over by four o'clock when you say dust do you mean nine the latest I'm guessing in the summer time I'm just trying to get a handle on what your time period what your time frame is I know all the cars have to be out of the lot for cruise night at dusk and I think that's or if I can I ask another way, night. what's the latest you would want the board to permit you to keep it open? That's maybe an easier way of asking. Hello, I'm Michael Bardsley. I'm a current exalted ruler. Um, the the facility itself, the lodge, closes at 11. We we don't we we're not a late night operation. So any activity that we have would um, outside would be winding down. Right now, the main outdoor activity is cruise night. Um, we would, uh, we have some other activities. Uh, this past weekend, we hosted a road race, um, the uh, Gush Valenta Memorial Road Race, in conjunction with the Recreation Commission, with very much a family affair. It ran from 10 o'clock. I, so, I can just shortcut this. Go ahead. My concern is, is just evening hours with noise traveling. Um, I can see from the staff report that there have been on occasion some noise complaints. Right. So my question to you is what's the latest you would want to run outdoor events? Cruise night is now at dusk. I would say 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock range, depending on the uh, time. Okay. And that's just a guess, but I, I do not, we're not customer you're running late hours and most of our ones are sort of family related or, you know, but that's the uh, that's the crowd we're catering to it's not a rock and roll crowd the uh, existing special permit are there any hours tied into that um, I I don't believe so because there were, at that time there wasn't an um, there wasn't a vision for a tent outside it was just sort of then put up and and considered accessory to the functions. Okay. So I would be interested in conditioning this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fran. Uh, do you have a, does your liquor license cover the outside? Yes. Anyone else? Can I just, a question for Caroline, if you have any more detail about the noise complaints that were received? No, I mean, it hadn't, not this year yet, and you know, it, was, right. it almost, I mean, a couple times, probably every year. Uh-huh. Yeah. And do you know what time they came in? I don't. I didn't document them. Okay. Uh, over the past 10 years, I've heard complaints in this room about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, open up to the public. Okay, you guys Thank you. Uh, there's somebody here from the public. Yep. Just get your name. City Councilor Marianne Labarge, and thank you. Um, I want to say that as a city councilor, I did represent several people in Ward 6 off of Florence Road, and one of them is here, Attorney Marlene Warren. There was great concerns that at that time, City Councilor Michael Bardsley at large had helped me out with a situation of a noise factor. And we went to Marlene's home and you could actually hear the loud music and so forth. And plus the fact there was a problem with a tremendous amount of traffic coming down Florence Road and we have Florence Heights and children and so forth. And we worked that out. I had a meeting um, just last year with the former exalted ruler, John Glenowitz, he was excellent, right, Marley? I mean, he did talk with us. He did work something out right of there. telling them when they come out of the Elks to make sure that they were quiet. So as a counselor, I had not received any complaints since then, but I can't answer for the pavilion itself, what is being planned to do there, but I do know, as a city councilor, we did a tremendous amount of fundraising, and one of them was for Clara Gardner, who was a student at Northampton High School and had both of her legs severed. 
we raised over 15,500 and something dollars and we went community wide. The Oaks is a very good, good organization. They don't make a lot of money, but I think in the due process of trying to compromise is very important. We do have a resident who apparently is not happy here tonight who is in a butter. So I, I can't answer for her. I'm not her counselor, but she has also talked to me twice. I've gone to um, the new exalted ruler, Michael Bardsley, in regards to him attempting to talk to her. So some form of compromise could be made here. And also for my resident, Marlene Warren, of her concerns. So <clears throat> thank you. Marianne. Ms. LaVarge, uh, question, were, since that agreement was made, were, were any changes made to the hours of operation or other than people being quiet when they left the Elks? Was there, was, there was no changes with the operation itself. Um, I do know that they placed a sign coming into the entranceway in regards of please being quiet and so forth when you leave. Okay. As a council, I have not received any complaints yet. Okay. Thank you. My name is Marlene Warren. Um, I live on Florence Road, um, and Marianne Labarge referred to me, but she's a member of the Elks. And I'm asking that you not allow this pavilion to go up. Um, every Thursday, I mean, every night will be Thursday night if this pavilion goes up. As it is now, I have to listen to this, and I have had for years this Thursday night, and it starts at about five. They start coming down Florence Road and Ryan Road, and I can hear them from both directions. Now, the cars that they drive for this cruise night, they're exempted from the requirements of mufflers, for one thing, because a lot of them are antiques. We also have the motorcycles, people on motorcycles, usually, you know, two at a time coming down Florence Road, heading to cruise night. And they sell beer out in the parking lot on cruise night. Now, if I have talked to residents on Ryan Road, um, Corticelli, uh, and all over Florence Road, and you know, we can't take any more. We're already dealing with cruise night. And I cannot believe that they have cruise night every week. You know, some nonprofits will have it maybe once a year, but we, in this community have to deal with this every Thursday night. And I, I don't think Marianne Labarge was being fair to me when she represented that. We worked things out, we had an agreement. I went down to the Elks more than once. Um, and yes, the last exalted ruler, he, he did try, but they don't control these people. They have no control over these people, especially after they've had a few beers when they drive out of there. And they come up Florence Road. and. I have been harassed by, by people driving by who know that I complain, and so hasn't um, another resident of Ryan Road. They drive by, they honk in front of our houses, and they look up our driveways. This is bad enough. You know, and it, the reason there haven't been any, any complaints recently is because cruise night starts in May. I mean, we haven't had cruise night all winter. If this pavilion goes up, there's gonna be more outdoor events. And I'll be in my backyard and I'll come home from work. And, and they say, oh, it's a family thing, it's not rock and roll. And I have to listen to rock and roll, rock and roll and all kinds of music that I have no interest in listening to. And I have to hear the DJ, what he has to say and about the, you know, this contest and that, like, it, like it's in my own backyard. And the last exalted ruler, yes, he did get the DJ to turn it down. Um, and it wasn't as bad. It was better, you know, so I wasn't on the phone all the time. But, you know, sometimes they have a different DJ. So do I have to go down there and say, could you please turn it down? When it first started, I would call the police and the police would go down, but by the time the police got there, you know, there was a break or something and, you know. So. And then I realized when I first started complaining that a lot of the people are retired police officers. Uh, you know, it's, it's a nuisance. It's a nuisance as it is. And if they put up the pavilion, it's gonna be every night. It's gonna be weekends. It's gonna be louder. Yet they do have loudspeakers. Um, and you know, dusk, 
By June 21st, the longest night of the year, dusk is well past nine o'clock. This cruise night starts on, in May. I've spoken to people on Florence Roads who are trying to put their kids to bed, you know, and they can't go to sleep because of the increase in the traffic. The traffic is bad enough without cruise night. We also have the fields being built. We've got these huge um, trucks now bringing, doing the construction on um, the, the fields right near the Elks. Um, you know, the exalted rulers, I'm sure they will try, but they can't control the people that leave, especially when they've gone in there and had a beer, get back in their car and drive through our neighborhood. It's just, um, and these, these vague, you know, responses that, well, I have no, we have no intention right now of um, increasing the time or increase having loudspeakers. It's bad enough. And please don't let it get any worse. You know, this is my community. I've lived there for over 20 years now. You know, I used to be able to go home and have peace and quiet, listen to birds, you know, and relax in my backyard. And now every Thursday night I have to deal with this. It's going to get worse. There's going to be more outdoor events. We can't take it anymore. You know, it will be, now it's Sunday morning. There'll be, uh, you know, when they keep talking about the good that they do for, for these people, that's wonderful, but do they have to intrude, be so intrusive in our community. Um, I just ask, please don't do it. There's no need for it. It's just going to increase the amount of uh, outdoor events with these loudspeakers and noise and increased traffic. Um, yeah, I'm just asked that. Please don't do it. I just just can't take it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Lise. I live right next door to the Oaks. And I have to listen to this all the time. I have to listen to foul language in, in their setting up on cruise night. I've gone over many times and spoke to John. I spoke to this gentleman here, yes. But I don't usually call the police. I go over there and ask them to turn the music down. They may, and then before you know it, the noise is, the level has gone back up. Then when they have, they say they close around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, no. They're out there still partying. Last call for the alcohol. Sunday morning, this past Sunday, music started at 10 o'clock, loud. I went over there. I asked three different people. Each one passed it along to the other. Oh, you have to speak to that one, or you have to speak to that one. I went over and asked him to please turn down the music. I can't even sit on my deck that I built. And they call this a flood zone. Well, I just can't take the noise any longer. And I'm hoping all of you would understand. This is a neighborhood. Yes, I have elderly people on my, I have a 93-year-old woman down the street. She couldn't make it here tonight. I have an 87-year-old woman across the street. These people can't make it to these meetings and voice their opinion of what is going on in our neighborhoods. It's bad enough the fields are there. The traffic, and yes, the traffic is bad on Spring Street. And I went over many times and told them to please, can you stop the, the noise and the cars going so fast on Spring Street. They think it's a speedway. They come down Florence Road. They don't even stop at the stop signs there. They just keep on going right by my house. And yes, they said something about the trees. There's, there's no trees there. They took some brush down. It's all grubs. You know, there's nothing there. He said, well, oh, I'm going to put up some arborvitaes. Well, are we going to see any arborvitaes? What, probably in the next 20 years? I got to live with this? There's nothing there. It's all grubs. And Sunday morning, or well, it was about one o'clock, last call for alcohol. This is Sunday, Sunday, serving alcohol over there? Where, where, what is going on? Are we at the local bar? And yes, I think we are at the local bar. Yes, there was alcohol. Last call, I heard it. Man. I, I, I'm That's sorry. Board, please. No, but I mean, I just want to let them know that this is what goes on and you know they don't live there it's not their neighborhood 
And if it was, I don't think they'd want to put up with it. Cruise night is awful, awful. And then if anything is, uh, Saturday nights, yes, they have wedding parties and everything. And I know people come out at 11 o'clock, you know, the, the guys are yelling, using the word, the nice words out there. That's kids, they're, you know, they're young adults having their weddings. But th this is not gonna end. It's, it's gonna have more parties. And I don't understand where they're being in a flood zone, how they can put a structure there. And I, I had to put my deck up high and I can't even sit on my deck now. I have to leave. I, I left Sunday and I leave on cruise nights so I don't have to listen to the noise, the music. And yes, I've go over there many times. And maybe I need to call the cops. I don't know who to call now. But I thought, well, I'll just go over and talk to them. That's the easiest way. But apparently it's not, doesn't help. So I don't know how you, what you're gonna do about this, but if it's in your neighborhood, your backyard, I don't think you're gonna like it. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions? <clears throat> I, I, I think we've heard some you know, good information. I, it, from the neighbors, I think from the Elks, there's not enough specific, it's not specific enough. <laughs> you know, the loudspeakers, the lighting, the times, well, it generally is gonna be this late, but it might not be, or we might have speakers or we don't know. I think we need a very specific set of criteria, but they're gonna have hours of operation, amplification, noise levels, light levels, the whole nine yards. I, I don't see how we could just do this and give them an open slate to wherever they want. I, I think in a, in a very general sense, the idea of making a, a temporary structure permanent won't inherently make the situation worse, but, but it, we can't define what the present situation is because we don't know what the hours are or when the lights go off or when, what the noise levels are and so forth. And that's why I was hoping if the original special permit had any of the restraints in there, but, but they don't. So we're amending conditions that we don't have no parameters. So um, to me, if, if you're making a temporary structure, a permanent structure, then we need permanent boundaries, maybe permanent noise abatement, something. Um, Planting plan, right. lighting right. levels, the landscaping. whole. Landscaping. Landscaping, we need a plan. Randy? Well, this, this gets pretty complicated pretty fast, so it sounds right. to me like we should continue it, but my first idea is to deny the permit but then we don't get to set any parameters but perhaps we could make a recommendation that some of the noise laws and some regulations be enforced we can deny it without prejudice which means they can come back if you deny it then they can't come back for two years so works for me there's a deny without prejudice which means they just have to go back and start all over or or you could continue it for continue it. Right. If there's and then keep it open out, so that yeah we can continue it. I'd like to at least have a conversation about some constructive things that could be done. I mean, landscaping is certainly one of them. I would want a full screen of, of, of landscaping along the residential side of the, of the pavilion. Well, that would help with light, but it wouldn't help with it sound. It will help a bit with sound, but with sound, I, would, I think there could be a way to request that you have directional speakers that don't go towards the residents. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, that would go a long way in taking some of that noise I don't know what's being done now, so I, I right. can't speak so to the that. Speakers will end up going into Corticelli. You know, the speakers are going to go everywhere. You know, this is not right. So, um, I, I, I think I'm with Frandy. We don't have enough to work with here, but I'd like to, ex I'd like to at least express to right. the applicant some things that we're concerned about so they can try to solve them. Hours yeah. are another thing. Yeah, and in some and ways I think Frandy's right. We, in, in involving this, we have a way to improve the situation in some sense than what's yeah, going on now. Yeah, because they can go back and do what they're doing. Right. right. Any other comments? So we're of a mind to con we can continue, continue it. it. If they are, voice if our concerns. If they're interested. Right. Well, Jeff, do you have something to add? No, I just, I, on behalf of the applicant, I think we'd request that it be continued so that we can have an opportunity to work out you know, some of the details, I think. Mm -hmm. 
you know, obviously, if you deny it without prejudice, we'll try to resubmit with, you know, the same information, essentially. So I think this just gives us, um, you know, leaves the door open for us to you know, have, have a dialogue about what some of those compromises might be and a way to um, regulate it such that. And I, I, one of the suggestions would be to have a meeting with the neighbors. Yes. Sure. Right. I mean, get, get them over and talk this stuff through before you come back to us, because if you don't, we're just going to be back here again sure. in two weeks or four weeks or eight weeks, and it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, the, the, con the concerns expressed are, are real, obviously. Sure. And, and you can see on our, on our side, the information that, that is being received is, is too vague to act on. Um, but there's, there's, a, there's a need to address a situation that we can't define. Sure. Uh, so we need to get our hands around that. Sure. Uh, Do you want to date? What's that? Should we set a date for? Um, that and that might um, that's going to probably be a bit of um, a longer conversation just because we're getting into the summer schedule so we need to figure out also which maybe it's a good time to do that what meetings in July and August make sense if if you think they need till that time as opposed to the end of June or something how long do you think you need on behalf of the applicant to address these items I would suspect we try to have a meeting as soon as possible and Take a little time to address all those mm -hmm. to do it correctly. Uh, I, I don't want to come in here with half the information you need. What's the what would be the effect if we denied it without prejudice? They could reapply, it would cost them more money, right? It's another filing fee, it's another new advertising to um, uh, round to residents. Um, How long can you keep it open? Uh, as long as long as it's necessary, particularly if there's a um, request by the applicant to um, waive the the um, deadlines for action, but you know, two months is not unheard of to address something like that or longer. So if we bump two months, we have one meeting in July, one meeting in August. Right. So in the July possible dates for you all to think about whether there's either July 11th or July 25th, and usually you just meet once during those. Mm -hmm. And then the August dates would be 8th and the 22nd. So uh, I don't know what meeting date is best for you all in those two. Not, I'm not here that first day in July. So July 11th. Do you think early July, July here. that gives you enough time to? I think so. Really, July. I'd like to make a motion that we. Well, wait. Before before we do that, can I just get clarification about how many people are here July 11th? Because we need at least a six. Um, we need at least um, five. I'd be here. <clears throat> okay, so one. You're here. The 11th. The 11th. Not. That's three. You're here. Four. You're not. You are. So that's one, two, three, four. We don't have enough. So July 11th isn't going to work. So July 25th? Yeah. <laughs> Not for me. Yeah. No, for me. Yeah, I am. Okay. Yes, 25th? I am, but I'm working with Berkshire Design on a project. So I don't okay. have to recuse myself. Oh, okay. Okay. So yes for the 25th? No. Yes? Yeah. Two. No. <laughs> yes. Three. We need more planning board members. We may have another what one. About then. Well, well, then it may make sense. There is a, there this is, is then it may. What about the, what's the second? There's not enough time. I was going to say, oh, end of June. June. Oh. Yeah, but but that, so that might make more sense then to, to deny without prejudice and reapply because then you don't have to necessarily have the same mix of people. And if we do get a new member mm -hmm. by then, um, it yeah, will be. Because we'll have more issues otherwise. With members of the board, so that might be. That's right. I mean, unless you want to put it to August, is, should we It'd check be very August hard dates? To find eligible voters if, if they miss. Anything. Right. Yeah. Well, let's look at August. Or it, one other idea is you picked the second and fourth. I mean, you could pick the third. I mean, if we only have one meeting, you could pick any Thursday. Might. No, then we no, can't. No, because there's city council, yeah. and we yeah. don't know what That's the right. I'm sorry. Are. Well, yeah. the other thing, I think if, they wa if a person watches the video now, can't they vote? 
can't you? No, nah, that's back? not a good one. That's, <laughs> that's really half of it. Well, you can, except if we have a new member, I'm not yeah. sure that's. Oh, yeah. yeah. They can't. Right. It's not like they missed it. Right. But you could stay yeah. on for just yeah. this reason. <laughs> so, August is the 8th or the 22nd? I think I'm okay. That should be good for both. I think so. One, two, three, four. Sorry, we did August. August um, 8th and 22nd. 8th, no, 22nd, yes. 8th? I think. John can't plan that for One, me. two, <laughs> four, yeah. four, five, six. Okay, so we have August 8th. Do you want to do that? I, I, wanted, I think we should just deny it without prejudice. Well, we can leave the option open yeah. at this point to the applicant, right? I mean, that there's much more flexibility in, right. uh, on all I mean, aspects. I mean, well, you could ask to see what the board and so on. Because if we, we don't care. Yeah. Do you have a preference? Mm, yeah, Either deny. Yeah, president, uh, can you wait the fee? Yeah. <laughs> Why? It's not that much. Continue it to the to well, August. Two fifty. It's two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. So, it's not it's like it's two thousand. We still have uh, public comment still open. Um, should we close public comment? Second. Motion to close public comment. Second. All in favor. What are we voting on? Close public comment. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll vote for that. Who's the right. second? Sorry. Steve. 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 Okay. Um, so I move that we deny without prejudice the special permit, site plan amendment, outdoor pavilion, Lodge 17, Spring Street, Florence, now by 822B-411. Second. All in favor? Thank you. That also means we can talk about it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Except that you know it's coming back. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I wonder if you could just limit the days, like once a week. Yeah, it seems odd. Very special permit was as often ended as it was that it didn't come with any whose nights own be once they didn't have it. It didn't start till. Oh, I thought it started up. Mm -hmm. oh. thing that starts up small. And they didn't have an outdoor tent for the first couple of years. Oh, okay. Then they got this idea to do this. Right. It just sort of morphed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, they, then there was like no way to pull it back. Only the license commission was like, why they come because they would extend the premises outside to this oh, right. that something yeah, it just seems better. Yeah. Or at least way and how do you yeah. bring it back if you don't Yeah. Do you, you know, give us details so Right. So we have two minutes to talk amongst ourselves. Can we do it on the street? <laughs> yeah, Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Let's approve um, service center. I mean, uh, talk about service center. <laughs> you want to do one more road? We have Next up, Service Center Road, which is that oh, yeah. <laughs> funky alleyway. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Pond. There's some raucous laughter over yeah. Service Center Road. Yeah. Well, I think Service Center really is a street, and it acts like a street. You can cut through there. It's sort of a Do it all the time. Let's get to it. Yeah. It's like the one in Florence. Like you know, can't go I know. Oh, my God. Yeah, Parking lots. Right. Yeah. In some, no, it's weird. Really in some really areas really of that street, you can't tell. Yes. I mean, what's other areas? <laughs> In that. Yeah, in street. fact, it's just it's so many names out yeah, there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a certain amount of people. Yeah, like all of a sudden look on the sidewalk. Yeah. I have no idea how I got there. Yeah. Well, there's some. Yeah, I, I think it's a street. Drive around. That's whips? No. Um, Here's the, like, the Florence Savings ATM. Right. Pleasant. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that is. Can I take a glance? Oh. Yeah, that's the yeah. yeah. one that goes by. And grosses and Smith uh, glass and yes, yeah, Smith glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or what is it now? The yarn store. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I think we had to rename the dog leg, though. You know. 
lost well cord or something like that. Measure. Yeah, I didn't actually realize that. I didn't either. Coming off of cons was service center. I thought it was just from prospect down to the yeah. yarn store and so yeah. forth. Well, I guess I am a little confused about the extension through the parking lots to get back by the welding shop and come back out the other way. Yeah, it's funny. Mm -hmm. it's um, I mean, I have to say it, it was not clear on the petition what seg what length of segment. Yeah. So per, to the extent that you think it makes sense for certain segments of it. Right. And, and that's what you I, can make that. Right. I would make the pitch that between Kant and Pleasant, it is a right. it is a connecting route and therefore it should be a street. Right. Yeah. yeah I have no idea. What that is. Yeah. But I would not be in, of the same mind for coming back by webs and going back through the welding shop. Right, and back yeah. Right. I mean, That's a just right. But it works. I could use yeah. it all the time. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it connects to the parking lot back of the Woolworth. Mm -hmm. That is true. Oh, you're right. That is true. Yeah, you can go. How would you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there. All right, can I get a motion on Service Center Road? Recommend in its entirety or just the dog leg or just from cons to pleasant or? Yes, cons to pleasant. Cons to pleasant. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. You know what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Devin? All in favor? Can you follow that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. We got three down. Good go. But it is eight o'clock, so we are going to open our last hearing tonight, which is a site plan amendment to remove the easement uh, <coughs> all of that at 325 King Street, Northampton Map ID 24E-38. And we have a presentation. Good evening. I'm Peter McConnell. I'm a lawyer with Bacon and Wilson in Amherst. Um, and I'm here tonight representing the applicant, Cold West Northampton LLC. With me this, this evening are Frank Colaccino and Peter LaPointe, who are the principals of Colvest, and Mark Tanner, a partner in our office in Northampton. The application before you this evening is to amend condition 12 of the of the October 2010 special permit. Let's read that over. Northampton LLC. That uh, condition was entitled, the traffic mitigation shall be addressed as follows, and it had a number of uh, mitigation plans within it. Uh, <coughs> one of the pieces of mitigation was that Cole Vest would grant a cross access to its abutter to the south and abutter, its abutter to the north. The butter to the south is Bill Willard Concrete. The one to the north at the time was Cole Morgan. The, um, we're here this evening to request that that particular part of the traffic mitigation be eliminated and that coal vest not be required to give a cross access to the northerly butter or the southerly butter. Um, and there are a couple of reasons that we are requesting that that be uh, eliminated. Um, the booklets that I handed out to you has some of the documents that I'll be referring to in there so you can look through that and read the documents as I discuss them. But the first one is um, in negotiating with the planning department for the traffic mitigation uh, component, there was uh, no tenants yet selected for the out parcels. So the um, traffic mitigation matrix uh, calculation was done in the alternative. One was if the out parcel was to be a fast food restaurant, the mitigation would be $269,000. If the out parcel was pe to be used as a bank, the mitigation would be $88,848. Uh, 
So, um, <clears throat> as we all know, the uh, use is a bank, and so the agreement was that Colvest would provide mitigation in the amount of $88,848. In uh, negotiating with the planning department, there were a number of discussions <clears throat> about the mitigation that would be appropriate. Uh, one that I'm sure we all agree on is that Colvest was credited with the sum of $50,000 towards that mitigation for the granting of an easement to the city along the, the frontage. The easement's seven feet wide and runs partially along the frontage. Uh, <clears throat> the Colvest installed the traffic light at a cost of 373, approximately $373,000. In doing the mitigation, the city um, indicated that they would not give much credit for traffic mitigation for that because it benefited the applicant. However, the city did discuss in some detail the uh, pedestrian access and the pedestrian um, enhancements. And Colvest agreed to put in two fully ADA ac accessible or compliant crosswalks to put in a complete uh, pedestrian phase at the light they were installing. They agreed to put in a new um, control, uh, pedestrian heads and pedestrian uh, buttons at Barrett Street. Um, and the estimated cost of those pedestrian enhancements was $81,000. So Colvest has done mitigation in the amount of $50,000 for the easement and $81,000 to enhance the um, pedestrian access at both their newly installed light and the Barrett Street light. So we believe that Colvest has fulfilled its obligation to the city by providing $131,000 worth of traffic mitigation. And the calculation from the planning department was for $88,000 worth of mitigation. So we believe that has been, we have fulfilled our obligations there. The second reason that we are requesting that we be released from the obligation to grant those cross-access easements is because uh, we have been prevented from negotiating a fair and reasonable agreement with our abutter. Um, I believe the northerly abutter acquired the property to the north sometime in the middle of 2012. In, two th in January of 2013, Colvest presented a draft cross-access easement to the planning department and to the Cassenzi Automotive Group, the abutter to the north. Uh, at that time, the planning department responded that the uh, agreement was inappropriate because Colvest was seeking some reimbursement for the expenses that it had incurred with the traffic light in return for allowing access to the across their parking lot through the parking field to the abutter. Um, Colvest had already, in their minds, had already more than satisfied the mitigation. But we're willing to grant the easement and negotiate a fair easement. The planning department indicated to Colvest and to Cosenzi that we were not allowed to charge for the anything for the reimbursement of the traffic light. This came as quite a surprise to Colvest. Never in the five or four or five years that permitting had been going on was there any discussion that at, in return for that easement they could not negotiate fair reimbursement and fair terms of the easement. So we were quite surprised when we received that correspondence from the city. And as a result of that, I contacted the city solicitor to, for an opinion because I felt that the reading was definitely wrong. <coughs> that the city's interest was to obtain mitigation, which they did. Where it comes from, how it comes from, or whatever, um, is not the issue. The issue is, did the city get mitigation? Um, and we believe the city has received at least $131,000 worth of mitigation. We are willing to negotiate and get a fair agreement with the abutter, but feel that those rights were taken away from us when the city informed the abutter that they had no need there was no need for, to pay for any of it. So we, uh, the abutter, naturally, uh, rejected our draft offer. Some attempts were made to discuss it that did not come to fruition. And the abutter sought your uh, amendment to its permit that required that it also enter into that cross-access easement. 
this board saw fit to release them from that obligation. Um, and uh, as a result of that, the, um, the abutter has filed an easement with the Registry of Deeds that grants conditionally at some point in the future an easement across a particular person, portion of their land that wasn't negotiated, and other terms such as signage, commercial vehicles, and a deadline, um, none of which I believe is in the amendment to the permit. So basically the, the position of Colvest is for two reasons we should be released from the obligation of granting a cross-access easement. One is that we have already satisfied more than our uh, required mitigation for the city. And secondly, although we were willing to continue to try to reach an agreement, we've been deprived of our rights to negotiate a good and fair agreement with our abutters to access that light. We believe that the abutters should be required to pay some maintenance. We believe that the abutters should be, a, be required to pay some cost of the traffic light. We were given no little or no credit for the <laughs> cost of the traffic light um, by the city. In the mitigation worksheet, it says that it is given for the $200,000 of credit is given for the um, cross-access easement and a little for the light. So we believe if the, we paid for the light, we have the right to seek reimbursement and to have a fair opportunity to negotiate with our abutters to the north. So we're asking that the board release us from that obligation and uh, amend our permit for that purpose. And I'm happy to answer any questions or, yes, sir. <clears throat> As I understood the, the, the history of the light, the light was requested uh, in order to develop the property, you needed a light. And the light's location wasn't necessarily ideally located, situated for the city somewhere between Barrett and, and Damon would be another light. It didn't necessarily, from a traffic sense, want to be there, but you, the applicant needed it to be there to develop their property to best um, manage the traffic in and out. But by doing that, so you have a traffic light that serves that parcel, you've got an extra wide curb cut to handle the increase of traffic flow, not only from that parcel, but from the abutters south and north who now need that exit to go north and particularly south. So if you remove that easement, the, you're, turn, you're, you're forcing the abutters south and north to turn left onto King Street, which at that end of town is a difficult proposition. So everybody's gonna end up going north and it's gonna cause a traffic nightmare. Two things. Correct? Two things, one is, um the decision as to whether to install or allow a light to be installed is the DPW's decision. And yes, we did go to the DPW and ask them if um, we could install a light. They said if the warrant um, so says, then you can. Hire a consultant and show us, which we did. Um, and it did justify the light. The um, DPW then asked if we, if we would move it from the current entrance that the Hillendale Mall had if we would move it northerly 60 or 75 feet, basically flip the driveway, so as to line it up with, um, with the blue bonnet. And we said, yes, that makes some sense. We will do that. That, of course, triggers site plan review to change the, um, the entrance. We requested that the throat of the entrance is the same size as the old entrance. The radiuses, the flares at the street are a little bit wider, and they're wider so as to make certain that trucks that are making a right-hand turn in have the room to do it and don't drive up on the curb. Be, because otherwise what they do is they swing out into the other lane to get enough turning radius to get in. So we felt it made more sense to widen the radiuses, not the actual throat, but just the radiuses to allow for more efficient truck access. Um, we have never said that we would not grant cross easements, we just feel that we have a right and a duty to negotiate those easements with our abutter um, in a fair and honest way, a fair and open way, and that we feel that that opportunity was taken from us because when the city planning department says, no, no, this is free, and we had no idea that that was the case, but this is free, you don't have to, 
I, naturally, the abutter is not going to negotiate with us. Secondarily, when the board removes that condition from the abutter, they have even less incentive to, um, to negotiate with us on coming up with a fair and reasonable um, agreement. You, you know, it's always possible we don't. We can't come up with it. We don't agree. But I think that we are entitled to an opportunity to do that, and that was taken from us. And when you add to that that we have provided the mitigation that the bylaw requires, we have provided more than that. Um, the response from the city when we passed, when we sent in the, uh, the draft agreement was, well, then if you're not going to give that easement, show us where you're going to give us $200,000 more of mitigation. When in fact all we ever owed was 88,000, and undisputed, undisputably we'd already given 50. So I think that's where we are, and so we're requesting that we be relieved of that obligation. Yes, sir. When you made these agreements, what was what was the condition of the abutting property? It was Coal Morgan, and it was closed. At the time that the um, cross access season was imposed, um, Cole Morgan was there. Mm -hmm. I believe the abutter um, acquired Will the property in yeah. May of the so my, Oh, okay. Willard. Okay. Yeah. In May of 2012. So Cole Morgan was when these when the 2010 permit was uh, issued. Cole Morgan was there, and I'm sorry, I don't know if they were open or not. They weren't. They yeah. were not. They, had they were closed. Okay. So, in fact, we, and we still don't have any idea who the... Excuse me. They were open. Okay. They were open in 2010. Uh, I think they closed sometime in mid to late 2011. Okay. <coughs> so, at the time, we had no idea who the abutter would be, what the use would be, but not terribly relevant, but we didn't know. And we still, with Bill Willard, don't know. Um, the reason that that one doesn't seem to make a lot of sense is Bill Willard actually comes out at the Barrett Street light. So that property is serviced by a light. Um, so my guess is that whatever happens to that property, 99% of its people would pass out through the Barrett Street light. But you are correct. We did ask for permission to put that light in and uh, we're granted it. And you and made these agreements before there was ever, I mean, you know, Cole Morgan was there. Yes. So you made them under those conditions. No, it was, it was, the conditions we made, excuse me. Sorry, Peter. No, that's fine. <laughs> the conditions we made. Can I get, was, excuse me. Uh, my name's Frank Colacino. I'm a principal at uh, Colvis Northampton LLC. The conditions uh, with Col one of the conditions were that we didn't want any truck vehicles, uh, especially chemical trucks, concrete trucks, or any of those vehicles crossing uh, over our property. Um, <clears throat> so we didn't know who at the time the, uh, the eventual tenant was going to be. Um, so we made provisions there that uh, we, would, we would negotiate with that tenant at the time that we, know, <coughs> we knew who that would be. And so now that, you know, fast forward a couple years, and, you know, as Peter mentioned earlier quite eloquently, our entire traffic mitigation was only $88,000. We've more than satisfied that. Uh, and to be put in this position for us, I mean, we have, um, we've gone through this for the last four or five years. And it hasn't been a pleasant process with this, with this planning department. Uh, so now, here we are, we bring a major tenant in, and we do major renovations, and I think you'll all agree that the property looks a lot better today than it did as Hillendale Mall, and we're trying to live that name down by changing the name to Northampton Crossing. Um, if, if you, one thing, one thing, yeah. This is the, the floor plan for Bay State Health. And they're bringing in, I mean, they're, they're increasing the size of their current facility by six times. 
They're bringing in jobs, uh, new jobs, not transfer jobs. Um, they're bringing, I, I, I think the quality of, of, uh, of the tenant is outstanding. Um, to be put in this position at this point is very disturbing, very disappointing for us. And um, go ahead, you have a question? Yeah. Yeah, what's your plan to mitigate the traffic on King Street if we remove the easement? What is my plan to mitigate traffic on King Street to what? If we remove if the easement. Re I, I, read, I read the regulations to require you to have a plan to mitigate. We've already mitigated uh, what The easement was part of the mitigation. Well, hold on a second. Not just the easement. Wait, excuse me, what was the question? What's your plan to mitigate traffic on King Street if we remove, if we remove the easement? We have done that. As Frank said, we, we, the planning department calculated that with our use, the current use, Firestone and the bank, that we would, our mitigation requirement was a total of $88,848. That's what the city would be expecting us to mitigate. How does the abutting property deal with the traffic concerns that Mark was was detailing before without that easement? Well, there are a couple of ways. One would be to negotiate with us about working out a favorable advantage to both of us to do that, that uh, easement. Another way would be the way every business on King Street deals with it. Uh, our light will, in fact, stop traffic mid-block between Barrett Street and Damien Road, and therefore will give people an, an opportunity. Um, but every business up and down King Street deals with it that way. In some places it's not easy, some places it's, it, it is. But our requirement with the city, pursuant to the city bylaw, was to provide them with $88,848 of mitigation. I believe we have provided them with $131,000 worth. That's what they have valued it at, as I see it. Um, as someone who's been here since the beginning, when you guys first came to us many, many years ago, asking for a permit first with no site plan, and then asking for a permit with with no plan at all and then saying you required the light in order to market it even though before you started work before there is even a plan at the first meeting you said we need a light because we can't market the property without a light the city didn't ask for the light the dpw didn't ask for the light you guys came in from the first as part of that light we said wow okay you put a light there that's going to solve some problems on king street if we give an easement to the property in the north and the south now we have a new tenant in the south or sorry in the north you guys are saying, hey, got a new tenant. They gave me an easement. Let's see if I can make some money out of it. And I'm not buying it. I think I'm, I'm sorry, getting a little cranky because this has been going on for so long. I'm, I'm completely ready to vote right now that we put those easements in place to the north and to the south because you guys wanted a light from day one. We gave you the light. We let you move it. And the only thing the city asked for was easements to the north and the south. You didn't let us move it. We didn't, we didn't want to move it. So it wasn't a matter of letting us move it. The city asked that we move it, and we, we acquiesced. You guys it. asked for the light. Yes, we did. Right. Yes, we did. And yeah. we believe that the light is a benefit, although we have claimed none. We believe the light is a benefit to the city, and we are it's asking. Well, we don't right. disagree with you. That. Right. And I, I we are asking have, for no mitigation. Positive. Okay, but hold on a second. One thing that I really object to is the is the, the characterization that we're trying to make money off this. I mean, we spent three hundred and seventy three thousand and change on this traffic signal. Now you're asking us. But hold on a second. Let me finish. You're asking us to let our neighbor go in and then use our 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 property to access theirs. We don't, uh, we don't value the easement on the northern property. We, we don't value it as all, at all. Uh, we, they, okay, but let me, I, I'm, I'm not done. Hold on, I'm not done. Tanner, but hold on. Compare this to another project. He's been a lawyer let on <laughs> said they were charging $20,000 for the easement. And the way Mr. Tanner put it at the last meeting was it was about the money. No, so, hold that, on. that's not correct. And what I said, sir, was they were charging $20,000 a month yeah. Oh, tonight I forget the month part. Yeah. All right. It's a slight so, difference of twenty thousand dollars. All right. Bring this so, back to. All right. But hold on a second. I, I just want to finish my point. This should and, be and the board, not not to an individual. I'm looking at the board. Um, so we spent three hundred and seventy-three thousand dollars for the traffic signal. Now, 
we're, you're asking us to let all the traffic come through our property. They've asked for signs on our property. I don't think you mentioned that. Um, uh, so now we have to put signs on our property advertising the car dealership. Um, all the repairs and maintenance through their vehicles uh, are our expense. Uh, if they have trucks that are com coming in and out, we have to take care of them. And then we can't ask for a contribution for our traffic signal? I mean, it, it, it's, uh, I don't think we're being unreasonable. We're not trying to make money on this thing. We're asking for a contribution for a benefit for the, uh, the northern neighbor. I don't think that's unreasonable. And, and this whole idea of traffic mitigation, I mean, the concept that you have here in, in, in Northampton is that uh, generally when a project comes up, you're in, you're, you assume that the traffic goes up because of that project. And the whole idea of charging mitigation is to the, for the city to bear those expenses. The traffic count on King Street since 1999 or 2000 to today has actually gone down according to state records. So the mitigation that you're charging is non-existent. I mean, we've had, we've, we've, we've had our traffic engineer look at it and we've looked at the traffic count. Now that's something that I'm sure you've never looked at. But so, so from our point of view, our use, as, as Attorney McConnell said earlier, our use required a traffic mitigation of 88,000. We gave the town, the city, seven foot easement behind the sidewalk, front footage on our property, which was valued by the city, not us, at 50,000. The, the pedestrian heads, on two intersections, Barrett and and our place, we've satisfied the mitigation. Now, if you want to, if if you want to require us to let a neighbor come in and benefit, I, who's who's being unfair here? It's not us. Okay. Can Carolyn? Can you? Give us some history on or clarification yeah. on. So I just I just want to clarify a little bit about um, the permitting, what was requested, the um, what happened through that process. Um, that um, we ended up with a permit condition that was offered by the applicant that they would do X, Y, and Z um, traffic mitigation to address the zoning. Um, so the permit was issued with that. Um, based on that offer and originally um, the applicant came in for a wider than 24 foot curb cut um, a traffic signal as um, um, Steve mentioned uh, previously um, to, to so that they could market the property in a place in a location that was not optimal from the city's perspective to make sure that a signal if the city were to come in and, and locate a signal they'd put it in a place that serves um, all the businesses on King Street so that they, it would be optimally located. Um, the wide curb cut was granted knowing that there would be an easement access and it acted, it functioned more like a street and the whole goal during that review process um, for allowing the wider curb cut and the signal there was because that easement um, would also be located there. Um, so the, the, the traffic mitigation, um, the easement was offered by the applicant to comply with the zoning and in order to obtain approval for, for that um, wider curb cut um, for the um, changes in the use and the increase in the volume of traffic. And um, that's, what the, that's where we came up with this mitigation schedule um, to, to sort of to back that in and, and that's what ultimately the applicant agreed to. So the issue is, you know, if um, the idea is that even if, um, and in fact, I should back up and say the DPW will not, does not believe the warrants have been met and will not allow the signal to be turned on until those have been met. So there's a presumption that there may be a need for that in the future. 
Um, but the idea is also points of conflict. So traffic mitigation isn't just to address the number of cars, but where those conflict points are. And the more tur turning movements there are in a street creates more conflict points. And so the fact that someone can safely make turning movements at a signal um, reduces conflict points throughout the entire corridor. So it's not just about the number of vehicles that are traveling on a way. Um, so I just wanted to um, make sure that there were sort of those three points that, that this traffic mitigation was addressing and in the permits. Okay. And if, I, if I could respond, because I went through one of those meetings with the planning department, and it's not, I, I hate to differ, but it's not like we were there offering. We started out with a request by the planning department for 800, about $850,000 worth of mitigation. And we said, wait a minute, we don't owe mitigation for the old Hillendale Mall. That's a use that's in existence. We went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and we negotiated to a point where if it was going to be a fast food restaurant, the city was entitled to $269,000 worth of mitigation, of which $200,000 was going to be the easement, uh, $50,000, uh, the cross access e agreement, $50,000 was going to be the easement, and that left us $19,000 short if it was a fast food restaurant. And then we negotiated, and if it's a bank, and if it's a bank, this planning department agreed <coughs> that $88,848 was the amount of money or value that we were required to give to the city to mitigate the increased traffic for that bank and a small addition to the uh, Firestone building. So those were negotiations. Uh, I'm not sure that we walked in and just offered this easement. It was requested. And uh, in fact, if I remember correctly, <coughs> there was the, either the planning department or the board said, you will grant an easement. And we came back, so well, how about our, at least a cross easement where we get something in return? So it was a product of negotiation. And the negotiation was very clear. It's in your, your packet that if it's a bank, it's 88,848. If it's fast food, it's uh, 269,000. Um, we've met our obligations, I think. We did ask to build, this, build the traffic light. We all agree that that traffic, I think we all agree that that traffic light provides some benefit to the city of Northampton. We have not been granted, nor have we asked for consideration for that. If it's from the city, we've simply paid for it. We have asked for some reimbursement from the abutter as we try to negotiate an agreement. You all seem to think it's worth a lot to the abutter, that, that it's worth an awful lot to the abutter, I think is what I'm sensing from the board. If that's the case, and we paid $373,000 to create this benefit, I find it somewhat unbelievable that we can't pass some of that on or ask for some remuneration. And we haven't even gotten to the amount. It's, no, you can't get anything. But to me, that seems extremely unreasonable. Uh, and, and yes, we did ask for the light. There's no question about it. We did. And yes, to answer your question, we were here without tenants and without knowing quite what was going on. Because quite frankly, we were trying extremely hard to develop that property. And it's not like we can just go find a tenant who signs up and then come in and say, gee, can we do this? We need to actively market it. That's what we were trying to do. And yes, we did not have every bush in place or tenants in place. We were trying desperately to get it marketed, and we asked it for that light at a huge expense to Colvett. And all we asked for was some consideration be paid for the abutter's use of the light. And we feel that those uh, have been taken away from us. John. And I was not part of the, some of the original discussions, but and I'm just trying to understand it would seem that you got what you wanted because you continued with your project, you've completed your project, you have a tenant for your project under the conditions which you agreed to. Now it seems you want another bite at the apple. And that's, that's the part I'm not understanding. It, it seems like you, you had agreed to something and now but you want to change agreed, that. We've agreed to it. That's true. We, we've agreed to a cross-axis easement. However, uh, it, 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 nowhere did we say, look, at, we're going to grant this easement for with, with the cost that we have put into this, with the traffic signal, with our cost. Uh, why should someone else benefit at our expense? 
But and and what is what is a second bite at the apple? What are we? What apple are you talking about? I think the the important thing is that it was in, the mitigation was in the alternative. If we did fast food, then we owed two hundred sixty nine thousand. The city valued that easement at about two hundred thousand. So we were going to give that in return for the fast food. Well, I'm not even sure but, that that's the case. But, but that's the way it's that's written. The that's the improvement. And so we're not looking for another bite of the apple. We're going right back to where the city said, but if you do a bank, all you need to mitigate is 88000 And never, I, I think we have, and Carolyn would probably know better, but five or six renditions of this, <clears throat> never was there a discussion of, but you can't charge for this but you have to grant an easement across your property, the wear and tear and all of this across your property, and spend the $373,000 uh, in order for us to allow you to develop this, the city got great value out of that one. And, and in other words, that, without the easement, without the value for the easement, our mitigation's been satisfied. You know, with the 50,000 easement, uh, easement that we gave the city in the front, and with the, the improvements to pedestrian safety on King Street that we got credit for, I mean, let's not forget it. The whole, our whole traffic mitigation was $88,000 total. We have more than compensated for that. And even though you gave us 250, where are we gonna get the difference between 88 and 250? Where do we get that money? I, I Where's that, that coming from? I think from? the concern is not the value of the easement or the value or the fact that it was a fast food, potentially a fast food restaurant or a bank or what the value to the abutter is for that easement. The level of discomfort, discomfort is born out of the fact that if there was a light, there would be an easement. And that, and that, was, that was the discussion. If you're going to have a light and you're going to put it there and you're going to have a 60 foot well, that's curb not cut. Necessarily. Let me finish. Sure. If you're going to have a 60 foot curb cut to handle the anticipated increased traffic from not only your developed property, but the butters north and south, which will then funnel to that 60 foot curb cut to allow it to go north and south. If you're going to have a light, then we'll give, then you give us an easement and we're good with that. And I think coming back now and saying, well, we did that, but but now we want more. I think that's what the yeah, but well, you're and analyzing I'm history a little bit makes another comment. I don't think no nobody's saying. I mean, yes, my email to you said that it didn't seem appropriate that you would be charging the abutter for your easement. But right now, what you're, what you're talking, we're not talking about money on the table. You're talking about you're asking for the removal of the easement. So to the extent that you ask for maintenance fees of whatever five thousand dollars, whatever the number is, I don't think the planning board or is going to get involved in that negotiation. I think the question on the table is remove, removal of the easement. And the fact is that the easement is part of the mitigation to allow the wider curb cut and the traffic signal there, because that's what um, f eases traffic on King Street and addresses the traffic flow issues that your project would have on King Street. So it's not, and so then what you would have to show to the board is, how are you addressing that um, otherwise if the easement just disappears? I mean, forget about how much money you want to negotiate with the abutter. Uh, that is definitely between you and the abutter. But so what's in front of the board, though, again, let's just get back to the basics, is should the easement be lifted? Yeah, but the problem is that you can't unring the bell. And when we attempted to negotiate an agreement with the abutter, the city informed the abutter and us that you can't ask for any money. It wasn't about the amount. It was, you can't ask for any money. So if I were the abutter, I certainly wouldn't come in and offer, hey, I'll give you $20,000 for this evening and $120,000 for this evening. Hey, you can't charge me for it. And then when we raised the objection with the city solicitor, who said, yeah, I think you're right, um, then we, rather than negotiations start then, then this board, release the abutter from the obligation to do it. No, the easement is still there. The board did not denied the applications, the and applicants' request. The board request. amended it to say that if they recorded a conditional easement, then they were free to, that's all they had to do. And upon the an agreement for an easement, then that would be it. However, what they did was they recorded an easement where, I'm, I'm not complaining where it is because we don't care, we have no use for it. But they recorded an easement where they thought it should be. They put in conditions that if we, if we do a 
cross access agreement. It must deal with signage. It must deal with commercial trucks. Those kinds of things are not a part of that decision. But the point is that they have no reason to negotiate at all with us. Did you put the recorded easement in that packet? Yeah. Actually, you did. Yeah, uh, Jen exited first. Yeah. yeah. I think that Carolyn is right that the board is here to focus on whether to remove the easement or not. And I want to get back to that. I want to make sure I understand, and I think you just said this, Carolyn, that that one of the conditions um, in traffic mitigation was to grant an easement. In fact, it says shall grant an easement. It was one of several conditions to allow the permit right. at the time. So that's where we stand today. Right. And, and then just the money or anything. It, it, right. The only thing we're looking at right now is to keep the easements or to remove them. That's and all. Or if you want to talk about money, but you guys have asked for an amendment to remove the easement, and that's it. And so I, I really don't want to get into money or anything like that. No, right? I need to drive. But my point is that, however, as I said previously, you can't unring the bell. We, you have taken from us the ability to negotiate a, at all with the abutter. And we believe Excuse that Nobody has taken it from you. These are the conditions of the permit that you agreed to at the time. The language is super clear. It says, shall grant an easement. It says nothing in there about negotiating any compensation for that easement. It nor says, it say shall grant an nor easement, period. Clear as day. And, and nor does it say we cannot, yet the city. Knock yourself out. That's not what we're here to do today. We're here. You're asking us to remove the easement. You're not here to ask us to help you negotiate payment We're happy from the abutter. negotiate, but I don't know how That's not our that. job. I understand that. That's why we have no choice. The city and department and this board made it very clear to the abutter there is no reason for you to negotiate with them because we're not going to allow it. And I don't believe that was a term of the condition. Your, the city lawyer doesn't believe it was a term of the condition. And I think that the city has put us in a position that's untenable. And to go back to an earlier point also, this board does not have jurisdiction over the traffic light. That is the Department of Public Works. You, have, you do have jurisdiction over the size of the um, inlet. So you did not grant us permission to do this. We asked the city, the DPW, if we could install a light. They made some suggestions. They said yes. Their initial letter says the warrant was met. They do say come back later and test it again, which will happen once it's open. But we met the warrant. We did what the city asked. We put it where the city asked. And at the request of the city, we adjusted the Barrett Street uh, light, we added pedestrian access there, and I think we have more than mitigated our traffic effect. Any other questions, Devin? Well, it's not a question. I'm just ready to wade in. First off, it is about traffic, and um, King Street runs about 22,000 vehicles, yeah. and it has not increased over the time frame for the very reason that you had you know the property you're in, you know the property of the Honda dealer. We know why that street hasn't increased in traffic, and we know that it will. And we're putting in a new business development with you, and your abutter is coming in, and we are happy about that. But we are concerned about the traffic, and the turning issues are the, the thing on King Street. We, we've had numerous town meetings about whether to turn that into a, a traffic calming, a, a, a street diet where we put a turn lane in the middle to try to deal with some of the turning movements without adding more lights. So in my mind, the, it, it's entirely about the traffic. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think you're surprised at traffic mitigation. I think you've described it very well. I think it's a common process that, that towns go through. Mm -hmm. But speaking from the abutters' point of view, um, they've lost their negotiating power because of how we've dealt with them. I mean, when you say if we'll do fair negotiations, we've We've, in some ways, gone through a plan that, that, in, that has always had that easement as part of the solution. I was, I was um, very vocal in the last meeting. I was shocked that, that it was going to be a, 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 nego a, a, a negotiated activity, whether I, you know, I mean, I expressed that. I was shocked. Um, but I, that easement is part of how we, as, as a planning unit, had thought about taking care of the traffic through the light that was coming. And I, I think you would think that's what we're supposed to do. And we produced an, a, an appropriate, what we believe was an appropriate draft easement as we were requested to do. We submitted it to the city and they said, no, you can't charge anything. And that's where it started. City, city. Well, that's, again, that's not our, 
The city said our, our purview is the easement. But the only thing you guys are asking for is the removal of the easement. And I think weighing what I see around here, I'm against removing the easement. And the money part of it doesn't affect us. That's you can the city, the butters. The only thing we're going to rule on is whether or not to remove that easement. And I could vote right now because I'm completely not in favor of the easement. I'm not sure how much more discussion we have to have about money or anything, unless. You know, I would just say I think the biggest issue is there's not enough information to be able to evaluate whether uh, you know the the um, offset for removing that easement because it really does affect the traffic flow on King Street and the site plan that was approved showed where the applicant felt like it was best suited to put that. So then that was shown to the abutters so that everything would line up because that was the whole point. So I think, you know, for the past four years that, that alignment has been there based on the applicant's design of, of his own site. But I think the issue is, does it make sense then to have such a wide curb cut and a traffic signal if the easement isn't there? So, you know, if the driveway is narrowed and um, you know the signal is not turned on maybe that's a way to well, that address the, the issue doesn't want the signal not to be turned on to, to summarize though your position specifically in regard to the easement yeah. the question came up if the easement is removed how do you plan on addressing traffic mitigation and your response is we've already met it basically that is that is correct okay. that is correct so that's the argument that was the, the city laid that out for us understood through, through understood. negotiation yep. and we have done that okay any other questions by the board before we open up to public and just to clarify carolyn the you attached the memo in the staff report the dpw recommends that it, the cross easement condition remain yes okay yes um yes i didn't um get to that dpw comment yes um, but their, um, their, uh, concern is, um, uh, what we've been talking about all along is, um, that the, the whole issue about that signal and the cross easements helped uh, alleviate what would otherwise be a traffic problem by locating a light in front of one single property. I mean, yes, it's lined up with the opposite driveway, but it doesn't do much for any any of the other locations within the that have access to the right of way. Okay, I think we'll open up now to a public comment. We'll have a chance to discuss some more. Is anybody here would like to weigh in on this? No. Okay. Discussion by the board. Well, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. I mean, <laughs> I'm in favor of the easement. I'm in favor of them getting together and working it out. It's almost like what we just had with the Elks and the neighbors. You know, we're going to rule on the easement. They're both interested parties, whether it's money, whatever, to make that easement work. And I hope they can go make that easement work. But my step, my <coughs> feeling on this is the easement stays. You know, that's what we put the light in for. That's why the light is where it is. It was part of the traffic mitigation. It was. We had many discussions about it. It's to help those two properties to north and south. So, for I, us as the planning board, I think the easement stays. I agree. I think, in my take, the easement was joined at the hip with the light. Right. And it wasn't a condition that if certain parameters are met, the easement can be lifted. It was if one, then two and they were forever to be joined and if they like you say if they can work out the conditions which i hope they can, I hope they can. that's great but that's not our issue just a, a point of clarification i feel like you know we should make or i should make is that the board never said they could not negotiate or that they could that they could not negotiate an easement that was i don't recall that the board ever said that i i made a statement when i reviewed the draft um, documents saying that I, that it um, didn't seem appropriate that they would move forward with that given they were granted a value for that easement and if and, <clears throat> and then the city solicitor weighed in and said that wasn't the staff position it would be up to the board to determine 
you know, if they wanted, if they couldn't come up with, if they couldn't, if the parties couldn't negotiate, they could come back to the board for amendment. So, yes, I started that conversation because <coughs> there was clearly value granted towards the easement. So, um, it wasn't as though no one had thought about that issue. Okay. I, I, another way of looking at it is to look back at the language of the condition. The condition says that act, that the that the easement shall be granted. That's all we need to know. Whatever goes on between the abutters to make that happen is their business. The language is clear. It shall be granted. And at the end of the day, that is what Colvest has to do in order to get uh, their property up and running. Uh, it's a bit of a sidebar, but clarify for me the access to the, the butter. The car and the curb cuts are there. There's one curb cut, a and right that's in, a right inbound. out. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this is wider than it otherwise would have been. Correct. Not there. No, not, not into there. The, right. Okay. But oh, the, the car, uh, okay. the Thank car you. dealer can get their car deliveries through their driveway. They don't have to use the easement. Right. Right. As I understood it from the previous meetings, the easement was essentially to allow somebody to exit the car dealer and turn left on King right. Street. Right. right. They don't necessarily need to go through the. It doesn't have route. to go the other way at all. Right. They don't. They don't have to be signs advertising that that's an entrance to the car dealer. Right. I'm not sure, Carol. Do you? I mean. My intention, I, and I can speak for myself, and there were other people who voted in the original permit could speak to it, but my intention and my thought when we granted the easement never occurred to me that there would be a charge to cross the easement. So it never came up during any of the discussions. It was never uh, brought up by the applicant that, thank you for the easement, maybe we'll be able to recoup some of our money on it someday. It was simply, we're going to grant the easement. There was, and my intention at the time was, the money never came into it. At that at that time, it could have been retail in both spaces, and the easement would have been benefited both parties. Through the mm -hmm. peculiarities of what happened, that's not necessarily true anymore. But that we still have the condition for the easement. Well, it's evolution. I mean, this is going to be there for many many years. So yeah. Yeah. you know, use is right. going to go. So that's true. You know. So is really the, the 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 <coughs> opinion of the city attorney is what? Uh, well, uh, that it's up to us to decide whether. Well, but the right? applicant had to come back to ask for an amendment to the permit. Mm -hmm. So, and that's your jurisdiction. But you um, ask us to weigh in as to whether or not there should be uh, compensation either way. No, I mean that's that he was clear that that's a negotiation between mm -hmm. the parties, and I don't think it's, I, you know, people yeah. negotiate uh, maintenance agreements all the time for you know common driveways and things like that. So that's mm -hmm. not, you know, out of. Um, you know, out of sight that that would that would happen, but um, and, and so I think um, the uh, but again, it's it would be up to the parties to agree to the terms, and they they haven't gotten to the table yet. Right. I hope you guys can work something out. I mean, that's my. I mean, I know we've talked about this a lot, but I hope you guys can work this out. Any other comments by the board? Make a motion. I move that we deny the site plan amendment to remove easement for Cold West at 325 King Street, Northampton, map ID 28 38. Second. Second, Stephen. All in favor? Thank you. Over by Smith. We're getting there. The horse barn. The horse barn's down at the bottom of the middle of 66. Yeah. Across from Jesse's house, or Grace's house, I guess. So we have three roads left. I know where I'm now. I drive by it every day. Yeah, lawyer yeah. man, the end. So, three roads left. Uh, Paquette, is it Avenue? Huh? Street uh, Avenue. Paquette. It's down here by the horses, like is it? Yes. Um, oh, yeah, Paquette. Oh, right. Paquette. Coming up in Hospital Hills on your right. Paquette is kind of interesting. Is that right? Yeah. I never even noticed that. All of which have a drain pipe that runs straight out of the city. Or onto that piece of asphalt. Oh, that's really? This is one. You should call deep. This is uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hospital Hills up here. Mm -hmm. 
the fields are over here, the yes. horse fields. Yep, yep, I know that. That's a, well, the other piece of it is it's all, uh, it's not a separate piece. It's not a separate. Parcel. It's yes. all one parcel. Yeah. 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 And oh. par there's parking lot right all along. Right. Parking all along the right side as you pull in. So it just felt like a parking lot. Way. Right. So my guess is DPW has just been plowing it, and that's how it got on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People talking about what? Okay. Any uh, strong feelings one way or the other? Well, I don't think we should accept it. But then I think you have a lot of that going on. I agree. I agree. Well, I'm, I'm in favor of accepting it, of course, but I don't feel <laughs> <so> strong about <laughs> it. I, I'll move we make no recommendation relative to Paquette Avenue. Second. Second. <laughs> Carla had that second, I guess. All in favor? Opposed? No recommendation. No recommendation. Come on, Frandy. Okay. Oh, it was unanimous. Okay, two up. Or two up. Carpenter. Yep. Carpenter is one of those weird things. You want to look at this? Really weird. Yeah. Triple donut. Carpenter, if you look up on on Google. Yeah. Tyler said you have it? No, I've got it. I tried to buy a house on Carpenter. Mm -hmm. right. So you know it. It's coming off a thin. It feels like a And then, we didn't stick around. if you look up on Google, it shows it, it, it connecting it, into King. Well, yeah, you can like, come it, through the parking lot. You can come right through the restaurant. Park, right. There's a Chinese restaurant. Oh. Like there could be a drive a drop right. in window there. There isn't. But right. That's what it looks like. It's very bad. At that point, it feels like a parking lot for a Chinese restaurant, and it ceases to feel like a road. And their truck, and the trucks are parked in the back on a as if it were driveway as much as anything. But the house is yeah. on the little yeah, street they itself. They yeah. are. They behave like a street. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I'm just to not to throw a wrench in everything. Mm -hmm. but, you know, there was, we also had Bright Avenue there, or Bright. Yeah, right near there. Whatever. Yeah. That I would say is comparable to that. And I think you ended up saying no, no recommendation. recommendation on that one. Not that you have to be consistent, but <laughs> just so you remember. <laughs> Why should we? Well, I'm in favor of <laughs> recommending it. Let me just yeah, say yeah. something, which is if you look on the map, they call, they call, is this is Carpenter we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. They call Carpenter the, the, the straight line down. But the curve that goes through the Chinese restaurant, Chinese restaurant they're not calling that Carpenter on their... It's not, it's private lane. Well, that's what I'm saying, but we weren't talking about it that way. Oh, well. No, you still if you, I was saying, if you looked up on Google Maps, it shows that, that bend going to King Street. So the question is, if they, if they were to turn it into a road, what is it that they would mm. be turning in? Oh, it's just that segment. This one is called... Straight. It's unknown. called Unknown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's called Unknown Something. Well, we're, not, All right. we're not recommending Unknown, unknown Something. <laughs> no, that's what I was saying. Mm. But we're, we're recommending what mm. is highlighted on the yeah. map. I can bypass yeah, that point. I'm bothered no, that it's still bright. No, because you can't. Part of it's the not. Oh, it doesn't connect through. Everyone's yeah. different. Mm. Yeah. I don't believe me. Bright John was a be doing it with <laughs> I guess this is a dead end too. He likes to take this road. Yeah, it wasn't Bright Street. It was uh, Bright off of Myrtle. Right. Right. No. Oh yeah. Right. Not as many as Gone Carpenter. No, no, this is a different case. <laughs> Ignore it. <laughs> I move to make no recommendation relative to Carpenter Avenue. I second. Was that Ann? Mm-hmm. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, well, opposed. One, two, three. But I have yeah, a street. Which way were you going to do? I thought it was a street. Steve <laughs> no, didn't vote for it. I voted with you guys. Three to five. Oops, I keep going the wrong way. Okay, one last. What's this one? Sanderson. That's off of Elm. Franklin. Um, or Franklin, I, I should say. I actually knew somebody that lived in That's what I mean, right? Sanders. Oh. Yeah, that's the other man. Oh. Okay. Twice a day, every day. Right. This is Franklin Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you sure cut to King? Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, this is I think it meets the standards yeah. for recommendation, but so did the last one. Yeah. <laughs> this I feel, I drive by the street literally twice a day, every day. And Make like a motion, Mr. Chair. What's he that? Can't. Make a motion, Mr. Chair. He can't. Oh, he can't? Yeah. Hmm. 
I want to sway you. I would recommend Sanderson Avenue for adoption as a public street. Second. Second, John. All in favor? Not unanimous. Yep. If Mark told us. Yeah, well, I can give you an update on the Ed Lou meeting no, no, for residential no. zone changes. Um, yeah, I have one more item. Okay. I don't have anything, so I think you have you have like forty five seconds. I think. Yeah. Okay, I'll speak faster than. <laughs> um, <laughs> so to, Tuesday, Monday. Monday. No. Oh yes, Tuesday. Last Tuesday leads into next Monday. Last Tuesday, Economic Development, Housing, and Land Use reviewed the re all the residential zone changes. Pretty good discussion. Um, so the, all but the URC unanimously moved. Wait, is that right? Anyway, um, <laughs> by majority or unanimous vote, moved all the residential zone changes forward with a positive recommendation, which means Ordinance Committee can take it up and and close out if they wish to there was one amendment proposed there was uh, um Councilor freeman daniels um brought up the issue about two families in ura and really wanted to push that also brought up map changes there was a lot of discussion city councilors there of the four councilors that were there indicated that map changes to ura were something that we should look at um, which is something different than we've heard right. <laughs> in a long time. So anyway, uh, the end result was, um, do I have 10 seconds left or something? <laughs> the end result is... Um, that was not for you. <laughs> that um, uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels um, got the other committee members to go along with a recommendation that there be an amendment to institute so this is the flip side of the ura to institute a special permit re requirement for the construction of seven or more units in the urc so multifamily or townhouse units and that seemed like a good compromise um to doing spot map changes from urc out of urc mm -hmm. on those streets that you've heard about over the last several months multiple times henry street pomeroy terrace so that actually requires another public that requires specific hearing notice because it's a more stringent standard than what's in and we don't currently require special permit in the urc now for townhouses at all it's site plan so what we've done is we've advertised and it'll come on your may 23rd agenda just that one tiny change special permit criteria for seven units and more a multifamily townhouse we've also decided to throw it in for the urb district too just because there's so similar, it doesn't make sense not to add one if you're doing the other one. So that's going to be on the agenda. Monday is sort of discussion of that. Um, but the Ordinance Committee and Planning Board can't officially move it forward until there's the official public hearing on it. So you guys are all going to look at it, even though you miss Monday. Some of you are going to miss Monday's hearing. Um, the little bit that had to be advertised will come on the 23rd to you guys. And then ordinance will take up the little bit June 10th and then it'll all be back together on schedule and potentially could go to City Council at the end of June mm -hmm. so I just hear there was no need for a joint on Monday no okay. there is a need for a joint. <laughs> at six or seven 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 okay. seven o'clock Monday here for joint hearing and, um, and the people that don't come owe us something, is that right? <laughs> yes. We'll figure that out after the yeah. meeting. And then, um, and then tomorrow we're doing a little van tour with city councilors to some of the neighborhoods so they can really put the neighborhood on them and feel it in. Ooh, are you driving? So, I'm having Wayne drive. <laughs> it's a brand new van and apparently it's really bulky. And <laughs> um, Anyway. Let him crash it. Yes. I've got a great study on 15 passenger vans There's if you want long. Mm -hmm. and Give it to Wayne. <laughs> in fact, you can, maybe you can forward to him tonight if you beat it by tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. We should <laughs> take it out of the <laughs> And um, that's it. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Good night, everybody.